The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Welcome everybody to this uh, safety law <coughs> webinar. Uh, this is the first this year and uh, Happy New Year uh, to everyone and thank you for, for joining me again. Uh, this is the 12th uh, time that we meet here during this uh, webinar and I hope this uh, current uh, publication and current issue of the safety law will be of interest of uh, many people, although the topic is uh, slightly different from uh, from those that we previously uh, published within uh, the ICAMI Safety Center. Now, just a first uh, check if you can hear me uh, well and if you can see uh, the slide that I'm sharing with you, just uh, please uh, share uh, with me in the in the chat box or the question box and also if you have any questions during uh, the webinar please feel free to to ask those questions or if you have any uh, further comments or you would like to share your experience uh, then I'm really happy to take that and uh, as always this uh, safety law webinar will be uploaded to uh, uh, the LinkedIn uh, profile, uh, the YouTube channel of the iChemy Safety Center and different forums, as well as to our website. Today's topic is, I hope everybody can uh, hear me, so let's jump into this uh, topic. The topic today is uh, key lessons from coal mine methane uh, explosions. As you may remember, those of you who already joined me uh, before, you know that first I highlight what is the topic about and then uh, I present two case studies uh, most of the time. And after that, we will see what can I do, what are the proposal suggestions in this uh, particular uh, area and uh, see what can I do in terms of if I'm a manager, if I'm a supervisor or a process safety engineer, and if I'm an operator. Let me see. Yes, okay. For those of you who don't know me, I'm Dr. Susanna Jenes, deputy to the director of the iChemist Safety Center. Uh, you can see all our publications and download uh, our guidance documents publications uh, from the iChemy website, visiting it on the iChemy.org website, and then you can even download uh, the safety laws in PDF form, or if you want to listen to the podcast, you can uh, also download the MP3 format. Now, let's talk about the topic because uh, this is a, a really interesting and really important topic, though we, most of us, not working in, in mines, but there is something that we can take uh, home as a message. So why is it a problem? Why methane uh, gas explosion is a, a really important topic? So underground coal mining is and has always been a dangerous job that's out of the question. In addition to the risk of asphyxiation, plus the danger of falling coal, there is also the hazard of uh, an explosion of methane gas, methane gas, which is continuously expelled by coal seams and becomes potentially explosive when it's uh, mixed with air. Mines must have good ventilation, therefore, in order to prevent uh, that methane gas builds up. And in addition to that, initial methane explosions can trigger coal dust explosions, the, uh, causing further devastating effects. And we will see in the second case that uh, this was the case uh, where a secondary explosion occurred as a result of dust uh, explosion. So let's go and see first the first case, what happened here. On the 7th of August in 1994, uh, an explosion occurred in an underground coal mine. 21 people were working underground at the time when the explosion occurred. And out of those 21 people, 10 were from, 10 were actually in the northern area of the mine and they escaped within 30 minutes of the explosion. However, 11 uh, from the southern area failed to return to the surface. Those who failed to return comprised a crew of eight 
uh, who were work who were who were undertaking first uh, workings for pillar development, and there were three other people who were also deployed in the southern side of the mine. And after this explosion, two days later, a second, more violent explosion occurred. And that, unfortunately, uh, stopped all rescue and recovery attempts because they had to abandon those and the mine sealed at the surface. What we can learn from this uh, particular uh, accident, it was a result of self-combustion. And that's, uh, that's the aspect of this particular case. The first explosion originated in the panel that was numbered as 512 of the mine. And it resulted from a failure to recognize and effectively treat a heating of coal in that particular panel. This in turn ignited methane gas, which had accumulated within the panel after it was sealed. The investigation concluded that the sealing of this panel after completion of production resulted in the build-up of methane to explosive concentration within that panel. And heating arised from spontaneous combustion of coal was present in the panel for some time prior to sealing. So it was an ongoing issue before, and it was not new, and it's building up, it's been building up uh, continuously and gradually. If you remember, and I don't want to repeat this all the time, but uh, if you remember my uh, presentations, webinars, and previous lore on creeping changes, this is also something similar to what happened here, that it's uh, it's been uh, unnoticed for a long period of time, and uh, the gas had accumulated. Uh, after it was uh, sealed, and it was uh, it went unnoticed, unfortunately. Now the heating wa was so sufficient in, in intensity to act as a source of ignition for gas in the panel, and this combination was the immediate cause for the first explosion. However, the inquiry uh, couldn't uh, reach a finding regarding the cause of the second explosion. The investigation revealed several contributing factors in this case, and these are the failures to prevent the development of a heating within the panel. For example, a failure to acknowledge the presence of the heating, a failure to effectively communicate and capture <clears throat> and evaluate numbers of tell, uh, telltale signs over an extended period. So again, this is uh, another sign, and this is already the second one that all the hazards remained uh, unnoticed, and it's related to uh, to the fact of the of creeping change, for ex for example, and there was a failure to treat the heating or to identify the potential impact of sealing with the panel, consequently passing into an explosive range due to the methane gas accumulating in the panel. And that uh, tells me more about uh, the lack of hazard identification, so that there was uh, no uh, proof of evidence that uh, there was uh, an identification of the potential impact of the ceiling. This was the first case, and then let's uh, turn to the second one. Now, a second one is uh, a methane uh, gas explosion followed by dust explosion. On Easter Monday, it was on the 5th of April in 2010, a powerful explosion occurred in a coal mine. At 3 p.m., a small methane explosion near the long wall tailgate triggered a violent coal dust explosion. 29 miners died and one was seriously injured in the accident. And you can see here that uh, when underground mine explosions or accidents occur, it comes with a high number of fatality. So it's really the consequences, the impact of such an accident is really, really high. Plus the evacuation and uh, the rescue attempts and, and recovery attempts are really difficult because there is uh, no escape uh, route or no uh, entry basically for rescuers, rescue workers to uh, to find uh, people underground. 
So it's really more difficult uh, a situation than, for example, when we have uh, a running chemical plant uh, and then you have to do and have, have to plan all the, the rescue uh, attempt and actions. So what were the key, key learning points? The investigation concluded that the ignition in this case uh, for the blast was the tail of the long wall. As a shearer cut into the sandstone mine roof, the resulting sparks ignited a pocket of methane, creating a fireball. The fireball, in turn, ignited the methane that had accumulated in the gob during the weekend and leaked onto the long wall face. The fireball then traveled into the tailgate area where accumulations of coal dust provided fuel for a second, more deadly force. Initial gas mixture at tailgate was uh, approximately 85 uh, cubic meters at 10% of methane content. Normally, such a small explosion uh, would generate uh, only a fairly low overpressure. But in this particular case, the initial methane explosion triggered a violent coal dust explosion. Now, what happened in the background? What information we have from the investigation? The mine had experienced inadequate phase ventilation on several occasions prior to this uh, explosion. The ventilation system was deficient in a way that it didn't sufficiently dilute the methane accumulation and insufficient amounts of rock dust had been placed in the mine entries to inert the coal dust and prevent the dust explosion. I will tell you a little bit more in the, in the what can I uh, do session about uh, inerting and about uh, uh, rock dust. Also, the investigation revealed that the company failed to meet federal and state uh, safe principal standards for the application of rock dust. As a result, coal dust provided the fuel that allowed the explosion to propagate through the mine. In addition to that, water sprays were not properly maintained and failed to function. And as a result, a small ignition couldn't be quickly extinguished. The company's pre-shift on-shift examination system broke down so that safety hazards either were not recorded or, if recorded, were not managed. So what I would like to highlight here is not the fact what happened in the mine, but I would like to highlight the effect that these causes are quite similar to all industry. So what I mean by that, for example, in the first case, uh, lack of hazard identification, uh, and then here also, safety hazards were not recorded. So again, hazard identification were la was lacking. And also uh, following best practice or good practice in terms of ventilation, why the ventilation was not sufficient. What happened in the design phase? whether they design the ventilation effectively or not. And all these come back to any sites, any uh, industrial uh, factory where uh, there are some failures that we can uh, really identify also here in terms of underground mine. Now, what can we do now? This is uh, the big question, what can I do? And uh, as most of you uh, who follow our webinars, then you know that the iChemy Safety Center operates around these uh, six uh, uh, elements. These are uh, key functional elements that are vital to achieve good process safety outcomes. And uh, the elements are underpinned by leadership because uh, we discovered that leadership is a crucial and really important factor to all of these elements. The six uh, elements are systems and procedures, engineering and design, assurance, knowledge and competence, human factors and culture. And as you follow uh, all these safety law publications, uh, you know that in the What Can I Do session, uh, we identify some of these elements that are related to the particular uh, idea or suggestion in the What Can I Do session. I 
I won't show them here, but when you download uh, the PDF document from the website, then you have the additional column that identifies these key elements that are associated with those uh, comments. Now, in this case, uh, around underground mine uh, explosions, uh, what can I do as a manager? There is a, a fundamental understanding is required of all inherent risk parameters for prevention of explosions in coal mines. And you will see that all of these uh, recommendations uh, for management, uh, engineers, supervisors, and operators, uh, sometimes uh, they are quite similar to additional and, and previous uh, safety law recommendations. But that is for a reason, as I mentioned earlier, that there, the failures and uh, the causes of uh, such accidents, deep root uh, causes are quite similar. So in addition to that, Prevention of methane uh, explosions relies fundamentally on eliminating ignition sources and uh, their uting accumulations of explosive methane with adequate ventilation. Dilution of methane must occur as part of the designated function of a bleeder system. Uh, again, I would like to highlight here the aspect of inherently safer design uh, and the inherently safer, safer design principles so elimination, that's the first. Prevention of coal dust explosions is done by using sprays to reduce the formation of coal dust, rock dust inertization, trapping of coal dust with hygroscopic salts and coal dust explosion barriers, hygroscopic pastes to bind coal dust, and mine-wide atmospheric monitoring to control both face ignition explosions and fires in sealed areas. So I would like to highlight here the monitoring uh, aspect that is quite uh, general for all industry. The finer the <coughs> excuse me, the finer the coal dust and the greater the coal's volatile uh, matter, the greater is its explosion hazard. If the initiating explosion is strong enough, even wet coal dust can explode, and therefore putting in place explosion barriers is necessary. Uh, we can uh, gather more information about dust explosions and past incidents about uh, relating to, to dust explosions so that we can uh, learn more about that aspect. In highly gassy mines, methane emanates from caved material and surrounding strata or rubble zone in concentrations close to 100%. Gas management is a critical point Make sure to monitor air quantity and quality throughout the mines, given special attention to the possibility of methane accumulations in mined out areas, for example, uh, pillared areas or long wall gobs. Methane gas is explosive at concentrations between 5 and 15 percent. Now, remember that it is most explosive at about 9.5 percent. In coal mines, relatively small methane explosions sometimes cause much larger explosions of coal dust, which creates lethal concentration of carbon monoxide. So there is a secondary effect here. It's not only the explosion, but also uh, the, uh, the creation of concentration of carbon monoxide, the lethal concentration of that. So make sh and make sure to develop and implement a spontaneous combustion management plan that is related to the first case, for example, in uh, self-combustion. Make sure that employees are trained to recognize indicators of specific mine hazards, such as spontaneous combustion and their control. So what can they do about it? And become familiar with mine uh, gases and associated risks. And this is, again, something that is quite similar to, uh, to other industries where uh, a manager or the management must uh, ensure that employees are well trained, experienced, uh, they have the skills and knowledge and competence to do the job, and they are uh, familiar with the hazards and they are also familiar with the emergency procedures, what uh, should and could they do in case uh, something happens. Make sure to develop and implement procedures for the setting, 
resetting and the, and the noting and acceptance of alarm conditions raised by any gas monitoring system in use at the mine. Uh, alarm uh, rationalization is a project run by the ICAMI Safety Center and uh, relating to uh, leading, uh, leading process safety metrics which means that we will be publishing our guidance document, which is a supplementary guidance document to the original uh, metrics uh, guidance document on alarm rationalization uh, in the second uh, part, uh, end of the first uh, part of this year. So hopefully that will be a really interesting read and uh, with some practical, useful information. So after that, we have covered uh, some of the aspects, uh, what can I do as a manager? I would like now to uh, give you more overview on what can I do as a process engineer or supervisor. Potential ignition sources include arcing in the mine electrical uh, system, a diesel engine overheating, contraband taken into the mine, electric motors in the non-restricted part of the mine, or frictional sparking caused by work activities. So make sure to rigorously control ignition sources. Again, similarities to other industries. Heat in underground mines poses a serious risk to the health of people and to equipment. We sometimes forget about how uh, equipment are sensitive uh, to heat, to certain uh, circumstances uh, and the environment. Diesel engines used in mobile equipment are extremely expensive, not to forget about that, and high temperatures can shorten their life with major negative impact on the economics of mining. People working in high wet bulb temperatures are at risk of becoming dangerously ill with heat exhaustion or heat stroke. In the latter case, the body's cooling mechanisms cease to function and rapid death can result. Wet bulb temperatures of more than uh, 300 uh, centigrade cause a high risk to heat of heat stroke. Sorry, uh, 30, apologies. 30 uh, degrees Celsius cause a high risk of heat stroke and above 33 uh, centigrade conditions may be regarded as extremely hazardous. Make sure to rigorously monitor uh, the temperature. While monitoring, you receive methane exceedance notifications. Make sure that a thorough investigation of those instances is followed. Because in some of the cases, and for this lore, I researched uh, many uh, underground mine explosion cases. And many of the cases, people tended to uh, ignore the signals, uh, tended to ignore uh, what was the methane content or whether the methane exceedance was notified. And uh, there were other cases where basically these readings uh, were, so there was uh, an elevated number of exceedance in methane uh, accumulation and they were just ignored. And uh, the latest case actually occurred last May uh, that had problems, that mine had problems with uh, methane exceedance uh, and they were not notified, they were not investigated further um, in many cases. Make sure maintaining and checking appropriate ventilation controls such as fans, regulators, stoppings and curtains. In case of a first explosion, be aware that it can happen that there will, there will be a secondary explosion and therefore make sure to take it into account when arrange evacuation and rescue operations. And also I think that uh, it's also useful if you uh, take it into account in earlier in the hazard identification and or in the design phase. Now, what can I do as an operator? If you detect accumulations of methane, report it immediately to your supervisor. Stop operations when insufficient ventilation conditions are known and inform the supervisor. And make sure to handle open flame and spark generating work such as flame cutting and welding with extra care. We can see here also the similarities with other uh, industries. 
Make sure to regularly check method monitoring devices if they are calibrated and functioning well. Again, this is something is uh, uh, useful for, for other industries. And that's why I wanted to, uh, to present this safety law on, on underground mine explosions, because I think that uh, these learning points uh, are cross-industrial. And uh, yes, there are specifics, obviously. But there are some general learning points that, that uh, can be used for other uh, industrial sites uh, and industry sectors. And, and this is actually what I wanted to present today. And uh, you can find the information, as uh, I mentioned earlier, that if you are interested in the PDF document, then you can download. Uh, so far, the English version is available, and uh, also the Spanish version will be available soon. And also, you can download the MP3 format of uh, the podcast of this safety law. And uh, you can uh, later on, if you want to, you can watch again this webinar and uh, I'm really happy uh, that you were here with me today. And if you have any questions, please just uh, type it in the in the question box. I see no questions. Uh, if you have any questions later on, then please feel free to send uh, your questions uh, by email. And as I mentioned earlier, uh, thank you so much for your uh, attention and uh, see you next time when the safety law, the next one will be uh, about audits. So thank you so much and uh, goodbye.